Okay. So, some of you are been asking, how did I set up my audio rack? Which is an analog audio rack. Had it for a long time. So, this is a cheapy. That's a magnet. Stock it there for some. Anyway, this is a phantom power supply. So let's, before I show you the, how it's connected and, and where it's connected to, um, I want to talk about the, the chain here. The, the fan, the, the, okay, it starts out with the microphone inputs into the phantom power supply. Uh, the phantom power supply provides the 50 volts that that microphone needs to make the condenser work. And then it's got a gain control there. And I keep it normally about halfway. Um, then it feeds, I feed it into the composer, the Behringer Composer Pro XL, which is an audio interactive dynamics processor model MDX 2600. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it is a expander compressor and it's got a peak limiter also which all comes into play here especially especially with that guy yeah yeah i'll get to that in a minute but anyway because i still need to boost up the highs and um this that microphone a lot of lows and the object the compressor, the compressor is trying to level it out. It's taking a lot of the lows, and especially the the, the, the peak, and where I've got, there's a knee setting, and a threshold setting, and a ratio setting. Where I've got those set at, help to level out the frequency response within the, the voice band of, the, of my mouth. And it uh, it helps to boost the highs. This guy it, it'll boost the highs by leveling the lows. It doesn't it doesn't cut the lows off, but it levels it down, and it allows the highs. Now one step up might be better. There are some uh, compressors and hope and expander combination like this one is, but it's all they also have. Parametric equalizers. Yeah, I know more more complication, but it has a little bit of a built-in parametric equalizer, and and that guy, you can set the the frequency of the parametric equalizer for the compression that you want, um, which is different than the parametric equalizer that's in here, and always with parametric equalizers you have more fun adjusting them because they're more complicated but anyway so our so right now let's let's we got a parametric equalizer in here um we've got preamplifier for the mic a expander compressor for this that helps to level out the frequency response of the microphone and it, and then we've got this guy to help boost the highs. I've got the highs in this guy fully boosted. All right. Now enough of that. Let's uh, let's take a look at the back. I'll uh, I'll start with the radio. Yeah. Okay, so we're All right. So we've got Yeah, I don't I'm not I, I'm not using that right now. So that's the uh, mouse and antenna ground wire. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, external speaker for my AESS. And here is the rear connection. Now, I'll try and get in there on that a little bit. I'll pull it out here in a minute. This guy, I've got one on order. 
I don't have the six pin mini din jack connector. I've got one on order. It'll be here in a week. Um, so yeah. Anyway, there's two pins at the top. If you look at the manual, it, it says, I'll pull this out. This works pretty good. I can pull this out. I made this. This is an eighth watt resistor. It's in here and it's a 4.7 K and it is right here, right there underneath this black shrink tubing. And then there's a piece of that resistor lead, which goes to ground, which is a shield, which this connects to this cable that I made up and this connects to the output that gets you turned around here of the graphic equalizer which is the final stage in my rack if you want to call it a rack so audio comes up here and it comes into here and I can feed it into the rear and if I'm careful, yeah, I can plug that in. So, yeah, one of the advantages of a little radio like this is that it's easy to pull in and out when you're trying to make connections in the back. We've got so many connections back there. Um, it's you get a big heavy radio, and you get a whole bunch more stuff connected to it. When you want to connect something in the back, you got to pull it all apart. And... Ah. So, this is a little easier. <coughs> all right. So, here's the XLR, I think you call it. This is Mike in mic in from uh, the microphone channel one I'm not using channel two I've got a patch cord here and let me oh yeah let me let me go back anyway the the microphone cable I have slid on it's got at least here it is. It's got a ferret bead on it. At least one. And I think all these do. Yeah. So anyway, this is a patch cable. It goes from the output of the preamplifier, mic amplifier, to the input of the composer, which is a compressor, expander. Okay. And... Uh, these, um, they're balanced inputs, or you you don't have to use both the plus and the minus. You can use just, if you use the plus, I, I, I think you want to make sure that you use all the pluses <laughs> and whatever. But it, wherever I got it working, it works. Um, and... And, and again, this one's got a a big old bead on it. And then, so coming out of this, coming out of the compressor is this cable. And it's a short cable. Hey, you got no beads on that one. Okay. Um, and that's going to, let's try and slide this over where you can maybe see it. That's going into the input of the graphic equalizer. Get my thumb out of the way. Get this out of the way. Yeah. So that goes over to the input. And then coming out of this guy is right below it. So this cable here, that's the output. And and this is definitely not balanced. This is uh, a single conductor shielded 
like a mini coax and this goes up this is this goes up to the, the back side of the radio where I made my little pin connector with the 4.7 K resistor this feeds the, the audio input also known in the manual as the data RTTY input so that's that's uh that's what we got i hope this helps sorry if it confuses anybody because it confuses me i've been there i know what you're going through and i feel your pain 73s for now me kb at kco